All right, but let's jump into today's episode of Beers and Breakdowns. And this one, we got a pretty cool one. SWAT. SWAT. That's a cool movie. A while ago at the time. Lincoln Park was it? Uh, Lincoln Park. That was crazy. The way the gangster was dressed, the way that girl was dressed, his girlfriend, she had a tongue ring oh, and, yeah. and the tramp stamp and all that stuff. And that belt buckle with the little holes in it. And the, the metal super holes. low cut, low rise jeans, yeah. you know? It was like all indicative of a very specific period of time. I just don't f***ing trust Jeremy Renner. <laughs> like there's something off about that guy. I've been saying it. They as even if I don't care if he's shooting bows and arrows. And then he was the the loose cannon in. Uh, oh yeah, Hurt Locker. Hurt Locker. Your favorite movie? I hate because that Because of movie. the accuracy. We just destroy the Hurt Locker. I don't think anyone wanted to know how we felt about it. They're like, don't ruin it for us. We love Jerry Rutter. So just SWAT repelling into an operation. Like, can they do it? Sure, I'm sure that some SWAT teams train on repelling, but would they do it? Highly, highly unlikely. Think about the resources it takes. So the difference between SWAT special forces is one of the harder parts about SWAT is how many operations they do. Mm -hmm. It's insane because you're just in your backyard getting called out constantly to go to, to be on missions all the time something's always popping off some person with a gun a lot of times it's bs but you're getting called out so frequently that to utilize the resources of a helicopter for one operation it just seems it's just highly unlikely they're just going to drive there hmm. and then the the amount of tactical positives that you lose from infilling with uh, a helo it's like you don't have your all your equipment you don't have an armored vehicle. You don't have a lot of things that are tactically beneficial in a situation with civilians. Mm -hmm. So it's just highly unlikely. I get it. They did. It's cool and it looks cool. And if they were, if they asked me if they should do an infill like that, I'd be like, yeah, that looks, <laughs> that looks badass. I just think for people watching, like thinking that SWAT is repelling into operations, like. Not really. Absolutely. I bought it 100%. Really? Didn't even think about it twice. I was like, yeah, of course. They're going to cart them all over the place in that helicopter and drop them off. Yeah. It's SWAT, bro. Yeah. It's also city funded. Yeah. See? <laughs> that, that city's got a lot of money. They barely get decent rifles. You know? It's like, <laughs> it's not to any fault of their own, but it's city funded. Like, it's hard enough just to get a good rifle and SWAT team, let alone be carted all over the place in a helicopter. Why didn't they shoot those guys? I don't know. You have two guys outside in armor shooting at the helicopter, mm -hmm. and you have a sniper staring right at them, and he's not pulling the trigger. He's just like, they're okay. That's I don't fine. Know. I feel like a lot of this this scene also is reminiscent of the LA. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. That looks a lot like the the bank robbery that LA shootout. They're just yeah. standing out there, just standing out mm -hmm. there, fully armored. Uh, with AKs, high capacity um, magazines. The actual bank robbery, they had like 100 round drums, Damn. which is just terrifying, of armor piercing rounds. So it's not that they were, and let us know if you guys want us to go over it, but in that, I was watching about the tactics that they used in that, and they weren't using good tactics. They just covered themselves in armor and used a lot of bullets. Okay. And when you use a lot of bullets, I mean, you could, it's called cover by fire is you don't have to take cover when you are using your fire as cover mm -hmm. because it's like no one's going to be standing up shooting at you when you're just laying down you know suppressive fire nonstop. Mm -hmm. so that was the tactic that they ended up utilizing was not shoot move communicate as much as it was suppress by fire and dominate by um you know overwhelming force and, right. and high capacity and uh, magazines with armor piercing rounds which is just terrifying for all the law enforcement out there it's like those rounds are just ripping through vehicles one guy's got shot in his leg and just shattered his femur and it's like you get hit with that round 
it's a bad day. Can you imagine if they had a team, if the bank robbers themselves were like former special operations or something like that, and they were really organized? That would they, be really bad for everybody. That would both. be terrifying. What's up, guys? This video is sponsored by 18 Alpha Fitness. If you haven't checked it out, and if you want to go special operations, you need a good fitness plan. Go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. He's a former Green Beret. He knows what he's doing. His post job from the military, from Special Forces, was helping uh, Air Force Special Operations get physically fit. This guy is on point, and he's a great dude. He could do custom plans and uh, just a common plan that I use, which is awesome, the kettlebell program. But I highly recommend you get a custom plan. Use code word BUCK, and he'll hook you up. So I'm still confused about this scene. Why did he shoot her? Just to get her out of the way? No, he shot her to shoot the gunman. To get the bullet to travel through? Yeah. Oh. He was just trying to sh he was trying to shoot him, missed, and hit her in the shoulder. Or he was just trying to take a non-lethal shot through her shoulder, which is a dumbass idea, no. to hit the shooter. The whole thing is ridiculous. <laughs> and it obviously ends up getting them fired from SWAT, mm -hmm. but it would end up getting them, like jail time like he shot as soon as i saw the scene i was like well there's a fat ass lawsuit <laughs> and then two minutes later he's like we're in a million dollar lawsuit from this like yeah you got shot by the police and you would just never send a swat team in there obviously they were going rogue right they broke communication and, and trying to be heroes uh, but there's nothing heroic about that when you have hostages and gunmen with guns to their heads the last thing you want to do is introduce gunfire like that because then right. people so many people are going to get hurt mm -hmm. if not killed and like, there's no way that after he took that shot, that those the gunmen wouldn't just start opening up on civilians. And then that one stupid mistake that you, because you're trying to be a hero, could have gotten 10, 15 people killed mm -hmm. within one magazine. Yeah. And then all those civilians are dead. You would never send a SWAT team in to just shoot a, a gunman when they're holding someone hostage. Yeah. I mean, has it happened? I'm sure it has. I've heard stories of of guys going in where. They thought, or, you know, typically though, you'll have eye outside mm -hmm. and they'll know like, oh, he's not near the hostage right now. Mm -hmm. And so they have a window of opportunity. Okay. But if they're holding the hostage like this, the main thing the police department is always gonna try and use is a hostage mm -hmm. negotiator and really talk them down and drag out the situation. Because the longer the time goes on, the less likely is that they're, they could, or the more likely is that they could be successful with the, the negotiator. So, but there has been situations, especially I've heard from Denver SWAT guys where they have eyes on the suspect and they know, hey, he's not holding the hostage now because mm -hmm. we could see him, go, go, go. And then they'll go in and, and get him. You wanna know what I do? Hmm. Let me tell you what I do. Here I would go. pop smoke, <laughs> right? Rolling in from behind the wall, memorize where everybody was. Sick. Definitely do the SWAT barrel roll. Pop up, I'll be right in front of his face. Bam, headshot. Guy clear across the room, boom, headshot. Bam. Because I'm also dope with a rifle. Dude, that's a Steven Seagal movie. Yeah, it is. Howdy. What do you need? Sergeant Hondo, you're back. Well, you know what they say, Gus. You're either SWAT or you're not. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Oh, just a tune-up. But please, don't touch my sights. And I made some modifications. To the trigger, too. And you are? Jim Street. Street. Yeah, we'll leave him intact. I need that back by tomorrow. Can do, Sergeant of just having someone else clean your weapon system for you? Mm -hmm. How stupid is that? Don't touch my sights. The f I shouldn't be touching any part of your weapon. It's your f weapon. <laughs> clean your own f weapon. Is, is that not what the people do in that cage? No. These, first of all, I don't know who has a cage like that, but it would be where you put your weapon system. Like, you're not going to have someone else clean your And if you're a unit and you do have someone else clean your you're a lazy and that's ridiculous. And mm -hmm. you should, everyone, I don't care how high up you go, special operations, you should clean your own Ready! 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 <laughs> he didn't wow. do it. Did he sling his? <laughs> oh! 
look at, look at, look at, look at. Oh my god. First of all, they're like top shooter. Just decides that after he's done with his rifle, he's just gonna throw it. I was like, what kind of training is that? You're gonna train yourself to throw your rifle? Yeah. So if you're in combat and you run out of rounds and you need transition, you're like, Ugh! just huck that behind you and then transition. Why don't you have slings on your rifles? Mm -hmm. Throw a sling on your rifle and transition to your pistol. Because they won't be able to do the roll. Yeah, that's why you don't do rolls. <laughs> you never so did rolls? Stupid. Combat rolls? No. You know, let me tell you all the things that go wrong with a roll. First of all, your slung rifle, where it should be, can come up and smash you in the face. First of all, and second, you're taking your eyes off the target. Third, all your equipment's getting jumbled around for no damn reason. So you could lose equipment. You could have dump pouches that uh, empty, you know, with your, your extra mags in it. And third, what is the point of the roll? Because it looks so cool. Is that literally the only reason? Can they not even come up with any way that a roll is beneficial? I mean... I could be firing while I'm doing the roll with my rifle and that'd become a tornado of bullets. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> the bottom part might be a problem, but I mean, it's, the just, other like, <laughs> it's just like, why, is, why don't you just take a baseball bat out, put it on the floor, put your forehead on it and spin around and then try to shoot the target. If you're playing <laughs> kid games while you're on the range. Evan Hafer showed me how to shoot a pistol. That is a pretty cool person to have teach you how to shoot a pistol. I forgot everything. I know you did. I, you forgot everything the minute we walked out of that place. I did. Don't mean to pick on you, LL. I love you in this movie. But you bypass an open door as number one man. You didn't clear that door. And then you didn't dig your corner. And then you got target fixated and you just went towards the target instead of digging your corner and finishing your clear. You still take that shot. But once you break that threshold, that corner, you got to dig your corner and then still flow in the rest of the room as though he wasn't there. That way you get the f out of the way. Number two man could take a shot and then dig their corner as well, and then you flow in as if there's no bad guys there. Mm. I know you're just a rapper slash actor, but hey man, do it f***ing right. <laughs> <You're jump kick. laughs> oh, that was a sick jump kick though. But before we get to the jump kick, she actually did it right. She dug her corner, but then she just looked at the open door. Was he not standing there when she looked at it? I don't know. And then she, so she looks at the open door, goes past the open door. He goes towards the open door, and then, um, damn, what's his name? Sammy J. Sammy J comes out and says, bang. What do you mean, bang? <laughs> like, what the hell are you talking about? He just, like, ghosted, hid in there? But they should have cleared that room. You clear everything, even if it's a closet. You clear it. You don't just bypass it like that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, someone's gonna come out with a finger pistol and bang you. <laughs> you don't want to get you don't want to get banged by Samuel L. Jackson. Or do you? It's gonna be a bad Tuesday. So what happened was they had, uh, I think people who actually knew how to do CQB do that initial flow in because that looked pretty good and it was flowy and they were picking up their corners and all that, picking up their sectors. And then obviously once they went into that room, it had to be the actors. And then the guy on the far right just starts flagging the out of his buddy. He like clears past them just with rifle up um, and then it turns to a show. But that initial clear entry was pretty decent. By the way, I know you guys can't hear the music that was on there because I silenced it because we don't want to get demonetized, but it was like a, an early 2000s rock song. And the only problem with that is that anytime you put music in from the current time of the movie, it'll lose its value later on and the music sounds stupid to an action scene like that to people who have evolved past that. So it's always better to put like almost orchestral sound effect type music, like mm -hmm. in Heat, like in those, it's very tense, very, 
you know, soundtrack esque music instead of like throwing a rock song from 2001. Yeah, that's true. It's just Good not going to stand the test of time. It's annoying. Shit. See, this music's good. Here we go. Three, two, one. Mm. Boxer, one down. If you ever played Call of Duty, you, you always schwack the x helicopter from that front window. That's just, that's just a smart play. Oh. Shooting through the front windshield. Yeah. A little Call of Duty move, probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably people out there that partake in some video games every now and again. Um, but anyway, the point of that scene, I love that training opportunity. I think that is so cool. And not many people get to train in a, a plane and then have the full scenario set up in a plane. Mm -hmm. And like that is such a badass training opportunity. Whether the, the likelihood of having to do a plane uh, hostage rescue like that is rare, obviously extremely rare, but it doesn't matter at that point because the training is so good because you're getting thinking outside the box. I mean, imagine just throwing over his, uh, his rope to pull the other person up to the top of the plane yeah. and then having to do that quietly so the people inside don't hear you and know that you're up there. And then having to think about different exfil points or infill points. You know that the two doors are going to be covered by bad guys. So you start thinking of alternate ways to get inside. It's critical thinking. And that's amazing training for special operations. Is can we get schematics on a plane? What kind of Google search can we do on this plane? What can we learn about this plane? How do we infill it the best way possible and surprise them? How do we overcome the obstacles of getting up onto a plane, which is, I don't know, 40 feet off the ground? Mm -hmm. Like that, all that stuff is amazing. How do you operate in a tight, confined space like a uh, hallway this big when you're used to working in a hallway this big? You know, and then having to deal with what if somebody falls in that hallway and you have to now go over seats and stuff like that. You're, it's just creating more obstacles because we can get so used to just clearing rooms in, in a shoot house. Yeah. That this is just adding a whole new uh, group of dilemmas that they have to deal with. So I think that the whole train trainings or the plane training sequence is phenomenal. And I would love to do that training. That yeah, looks sick. It looks so badass. Yo, this is where this movie completely loses me. Little puppet learn how to use an RPG. Yeah. <laughs> well, why does Joker have an AT4? <laughs> how did he get that AT4? Oh, that's like, one of my cousins. I don't know how they buy that stuff. But bro, uh, this part of the movie gets me because first of all, it's so stereotypical that like the Latin gang is like so cholo mm -hmm. that it's like to the T of a meme. Right. And then the black gang is so like stereotypical bandana with the point yeah. and the big baggy clothes. It's like, dude, <laughs> you just like generalize oh, yeah. entire races of people. Like I think they had the Asian the gangs Asian gang too. With the like, sunglasses on yeah. and the long hair. <laughs> like, Every one of them. I guarantee you one of them did like a karate move at some point oh, during, yeah. the, during the assault. Yeah, he probably did a roundhouse kick. <laughs> uh, dude, they were just like... Like color board level one, not any depth to that. And to think that because this guy puts out a bounty to save him, all of the gangsters in all of the city are just gonna unify, like even within each other. You know, like like Crips have there's like a hundred sets of Crips. It's not like there's Crips and Bloods and that's it. So you got all these like Crips unifying, and then you got the Latin gangs unifying, and they're all just gonna swarm this one city mm -hmm. and be willing to just go get in a shootout with cops over $1 million. What's the point of the money, regardless of how much it is, when you're not alive or free to spend it? Right. Like what sense would it make to go get in a shootout with cops for any amount of money? And it's also like, thank you for assuming that because we're Mexican, we're so stupid, we wouldn't realize bullets can hit us too. We should probably wear some sort of plate since we can afford
RPGs yeah. and all of that. <laughs> That's oh, a good no. point. But don't worry about all the armor. You know, we don't need any of that. If we get shot, we just walk it off. It's like everybody would have, I mean, they would look like that maybe if they were going to go out, right, on the town and flex when they're with their crew, whatever the f*** they're doing. But they're not going to dress like that when they're going into a literal battle with the LAPD and SWAT. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. Yeah, they dress them like they're going for the Sunday lowrider show. Yeah, exactly. It's not like, and you're, but you're trying Which to... Which is not a stereotype. I love the lowrider shows on Sundays in Denver. It's huge. But I hope you guys like that breakdown of SWAT. We're going to go on to the next one, and then we got to go catch some flights. Our Colorado <laughs> trip. I checked my time. Almost time to go. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Please do us a favor. Hit like, subscribe comment down below it helps so much and we truly appreciate your subscriptions we also have a new show based on uh, my book that's coming out in january called better broken and we're going to have a new show where we interview former special operations uh, pretty much just all successful people and we start trying to dig into their trauma and find out how the hardship of their lives propelled them to be where they are today and it's going to be more of a serious take uh, to pair with beers and breakdowns and our shenanigans mm -hmm. so Stick around, we got a lot more coming your guys' way, and we'll see you on the next one.